I've been a fan of Keychron's V1 keyboards since I got into the hobby. At just 94 USD, they've always been a good value, and with the new V1 Max introducing a plate-based gasket mounting system, 1000 Hz polling, and three dedicated Bluetooth channels, everything just got a little bit better. That said, while I like the PCB plate package of the V1 Max, the case is a bit plain and hollow, which represents the perfect opportunity for me to take some creative liberties and put my caliper and Prusa XL 3D printer to work. So, last weekend, I reverse engineered the V1 Max's PCB plate assembly and designed my own custom case, complete with a 3D printed knob, gaskets, and an intricate case pad to allow me to not only add a splash of color to my keyboard, but also revise the sound a little bit while making the hardware truly open source. Because I'm sharing this design under a CERN V2 strongly reciprocal open hardware license on printables.com so that you can print your own or make modifications to the design. Check out the video description for details. The footprint of my custom V1 Max case is nearly identical to that of the original case, varying less than half a millimeter in any direction, which allows it to still comfortably fit in Keychron's travel case. The front edge is around 21.5 millimeters as well, which pairs nicely with the company's wooden palm rest. However, instead of opting for kickstand feet to adjust the typing angle, I've used adhesive rubber pads and made the case tilt at 5 degrees rather than the default 3.5, making it more in line with the Q1 Max. In my experience, this makes for a much more comfortable typing angle. The most obvious external change, though, is the pivot from a chamfered case base that tucks underneath to one that maintains the projection of the top case, which gave me enough room to create this chamfered and angled motif that encircles the keyboard base, adding a nice splash of color. I also developed a custom rotary knob to carry this color through to the top side of the keyboard. It's a fairly simple design for now, but I hope to release a few knob variations in the future because it's an easy way to customize the case look from the user's perspective. Opening the printed case up, we can see that both halves contain eight rectangular slots for the upper and lower TPU gaskets. These keep the PCB plate assembly suspended and cushioned, reducing vibration transfer and allowing for some moderate flex. These gaskets have an asymmetrical chamfer along the internal edge to allow for a pinch in place fit and are fairly simple and thin to allow this semi-flexible 95A TPU filament to bounce and bend as intended. Removing the plate, we can see that I opted for a less hollow case design compared to the original V1 Max case. This gives the case a bit more mass, keeps the base parallel to the PCB, and better mimics the case base of the Q1 Max. On the back left, I've created a recess for the USB daughter board which includes a sealed but recessed cavity to allow the charging LED to remain visible when lit. It also includes 3D printed switches for both the mode and OS toggles. These work surprisingly well, provided you adjust the screw tension on the daughter board to achieve the switch resistance to suit your preference. Centrally, there's also a small recess for the V1 Max's 4000 mAh battery. Removing this battery with its adhesive is easily the most dangerous and challenging part of building this keyboard. So if you do attempt this build, be very careful when peeling it up, go slow, and do so at your own risk. In the future, I'd like to look into getting a larger battery so that I can extend the keyboard life while also avoiding the need to remove this from the original case. Then, on the back right, we can see that there are a few protrusions, as well as two slots for pairs of circular 6mm magnets. These help to secure the two USB-A and USB-C radio frequency dongles that come with the V1 Max and which slide into the back right side of the keyboard. Oh yeah, and I developed an optional case base pad that can be printed out of TPU. The geometry is quite simple, just a two and a quarter millimeter pad that fits the base cavity with cutouts and a small recess for the top of the battery. However, I used Prusa Slicer to make the Archimedean Chords infill pattern visible on the underside so that there would be flexible ribs that can interact with the case acoustics. And with that, you're probably wondering how does this 3D printed case sound? So let's have a listen. 
To complete the aesthetic I was going for, I've used these white and gray Korean character OEM dye sublimated PBT keycaps that I purchased from Keychron a while back, as well as a white Nufi ghost bar, which sit atop the linear red Gateron Jupiter switches that came with my V1 Max. We'll start with a sample of the original V1 Max configuration with the standard OSA keycaps, then add these OEM ones before stepping through a few variations of my printed case, including an empty base and combinations that include a base pad as well as a Tempest tape mod. As you may note, I've yet to tune my stabilizers, so this is how you could expect it to sound if the PCB plate assembly was taken from a new V1 Max without modification. I'm actually pleasantly surprised by how well this 3D printed case sounds. I'm sure there's plenty of tweaking that can be done to the geometry to improve the acoustics further, but that's why I'm sharing this design open source. The base pad seems to dampen the volume of the keyboard a good amount, which you may or may not like, while the Tempest Tape mod makes the keys sound a little more marbly. My preference is to use the printed case with tape, but no base pad, but let me know what you think using the comments below. As I said in the beginning, I've shared all of the slicer files as well as the case geometry in step format on printables. However, here's a quick overview of how I printed each component as well as a list of a few things that you may need. To begin, in addition to the V1 Max, from which we take the PCB plate assembly, daughter board and screws, battery, case screws, and radio frequency dongles, we also need four small magnets that are six millimeters in diameter and one and a half millimeters thick and four adhesive feet. I stole some clear rubber ones from this cabinet pad pack. I'll leave affiliate links to suggested items on Amazon in the video description. Then you'll also need at least 356 grams of PLA and 53 grams of TPU. I opted for white and turquoise PLA plus for the case base and knob as well as some Galaxy Black Prusament PLA for the case top. Because of its 329 by 149 millimeter footprint, you'll also need access to a larger desktop 3D printer. Fortunately, I own a Prusa XL with two printheads, allowing me to modify colors on a few of the parts as well. All components were printed with base settings of 15% rectilinear infill, two perimeters, 0.32 millimeter speed layer height, a 0.6mm nozzle, and textured print bed. The case top was printed upside down in Galaxy Black PLA alongside the two daughter board switches, which were printed with their touch points facing upward and no supports. 
the only modification being the increase to six perimeters and support material that were used around the base of the knob recess to give it a slightly cleaner finish. The knob was similarly printed upside down to eliminate the need for supports, and was made with turquoise PLA+. The case base was printed flat on its underside with white PLA+, with support material applied around the daughter board ports, as well as the radio frequency dongle slots. I then used multi-material painting to prescribe the turquoise PLA+, be used for the protruding chamfered surround, and I blocked seams from being on the external faces of the screw holes. Finally, the gaskets were printed in a blue TPU with their slots facing upward and on their flat side, while the base pad was printed on its top, but with a custom modifier that created a 2mm edge and allowed for the Archimedean cords infill to be visible. It took a few iterations to get the geometry correct for all of these pieces, but the prints came out really clean and the components all assemble fairly easily now. The only thing worth noting is that you may want to play around a little bit with the positioning of the PCB plate assembly atop the gaskets so that the knob is perfectly centered in its recess. Once complete, with the tape mod and the base pad, my printed V1 Max weighs in at 925 grams. This is a comfortable increase over the 772 grams of the standard V1 Max, which I noted to be a little too light for my taste in my original review. Though of course, you can alter the perimeters and infill when printing to add or remove weight accordingly. But what do you think? I'm really happy with how this project turned out. I think the price point as well as the open firmware of the V1 Max make it a perfect platform to justify these kind of hardware modifications, especially because it's always kind of bothered me that the company says their keyboards are open source, but the hardware files aren't shared. And while I'm sure I'll continue tweaking the design, I'd love to see what others do with this open source case. As I've said, I'm sharing the files freely, so if you do decide to print your own version or modify it in some way, I'd love to see and hear about it, so please share comments below as well as on printables.com. Otherwise, if you found this video interesting, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.